Um, and I'm glad the weather's cleared up a little bit. But I've had quite a few phone calls today about being stranded in Cardiff because of the trains and things like that and all sorts. So um, initially what I want to say is I can imagine receiving... The, I'm a parent myself, and the, the, the letter that was sent out, I realised that it was very generic. But if you look at the amount of people that are here tonight, and actually this is just half the amount of people, we are talking about 160 learners across AS and A2. And... Um, when it says things like exhausted all learning avenues, think, who is this bloody woman and what is she going on about? Well, <laughs> I think some people have actually phoned me and said, I really don't understand what you're, what you're getting at, Laura. But tonight, the talk will um, hopefully make it a lot clearer for us. So what we're going to do is we're actually looking at learning and, and we're, we're looking at learning in general. We're not looking at what you're learning here at college or, or what any of us learn but we are looking at how we learn specifically. So there's going to be a bit of a science bit, there's a bit of uh, psychology in it as well. So, um, yeah, my name's Laura Sumner, and um, I've been teaching for about 11 years now, um, teaching a variety of subjects across uh, a lot of the creative area. And for some of that time, um, I've managed the creative arts and media as well. So. What actually we started to look at over the last couple of years is, obviously being a manager, we did, we did the number crunching. We were looking at what students were coming in with their GCSEs and then what they were leaving with. And was there a correlation between these results? Well, actually, when we started to have a look at the data, um, there wasn't. What we started to see was that people that came in with really respectable GCSE grades could actually leave us with more moderate results and then we might have had some that came in with quite moderate results at GCSE and actually completely excelled all their target grades. So this made us start to question um, the learning that was going on and what was it, what made the difference between those two learners. So the context of this presentation is going to be based on my past students, well our past students, okay. And you might be able to start to identify th some of these things within our, in yourselves. So, back when I was a manager, one of the things that obviously staff wanted me to do was speak to any learner that was underperforming. They might have had lots of chats with them and sometimes they thought that maybe a manager would have more of an impact to see of what was going on. And actually what we would find is that, well, I learned very quickly, is that my job was to just listen. It, it wasn't to question and poke and, and, and just find a problem. It was actually to listen to the learner. And over a period of time, whether that would be the first time we met, it might have been a couple of times that I might have, have met with them, what we started to get was this internal dialogue. This, you know, your inner self, the person that always speaks to you constantly, that makes you do all those decisions and things, that has all those feelings and all those thoughts. Well, what started to come out when we spent more time just listening were their motivations, were their concerns about their learning, and really the fact that they were just quite stuck. And they, it was at, they reached a point where they didn't know what to do with their learning anymore. They couldn't put their finger on why things weren't working out. So what we started to get at is we started to realise this was to do with actually the learner's mindset. And this, actually, our mindset controls um, how we felt about our learning and the learning we were doing itself. What started to come out was how they felt about any setbacks, how they took failure, or what they thought failure was, what it was to them, how they cope with mistakes, and this thing where they might have tried absolutely everything in their power to succeed, yet still not managed it. So there came a point where that people were, like, what, some of these students were like, well, what is the point? How do I keep going? You know, and it was our job as educators to help them out with that, to give them the, the options. What it highlighted was an awful lot of self-doubt. Self-doubt in their ability to succeed, especially when things got, to, uh, got extremely difficult. And it was almost as if they were trying to hike through sinking sand. You know, they didn't know what to do or where to go. So what our research led us into 
is um, a little bit of the psychology. So there's a professor called Carol Dweck, and she's very high up in her field. And she's done a lot of research which is based on mindset. All of this stuff as well is backed up with a lot of educational theorists, but I'm not going to bore you with any of that this evening. So some of us feel that our intelligence is actually fixed and we, we can't change it. And when, if we find, if, we, if we're learning and we find something particularly difficult, very difficult in fact, that maybe um, we're pursuing the wrong thing, maybe we should pick something else, try and find something else that we might be good at. So we can't change our intelligence. And then some of us actually believe that our intelligence can be grown and that the mistakes that we make are our learning curve to get to the end result. And even if it takes us, if, even if it's a really slow process for us and it takes us a long time, we can still get there. So we can change our abilities. Okay. So actually that says... And the neuroscience tells us, actually, that we're not chained to our current capabilities. Where you're at now, now currently, and this goes for all of us, where we are now in our lives doesn't mean that this is where we're going to stay and that we have the opportunity, our brain can change. Now, a long time ago, scientists believed that after childhood, um, our brain became hardwired. By the time we reached adulthood, we couldn't change our brain. We couldn't change our thought patterns, how we thought about particular things. And you know how you say, you used to say, oh, he's just stuck in his ways. You know, that idea that um, once they'd reached a point, there's no changing it. But actually, just over the last decade, scientists have realised that we can change our brain. Now, it's up to us to do that, but it is actually possible. Our brain is malleable, a bit like plastic. It's called neuroplasticity. And here's my lovely uh, drawing of the brain here. So what we've got is our brains like a giant connective power grid. So all these things here are pathways. And every time we think, every time we feel an emotion, every time we do a certain task, these light up. Okay, so these are uh, concrete pathways. Yep, we travel them all the time. The more we travel them, the more we think those thoughts, those patterns, the stronger they become in our brain. Okay, so there are habits. They're our established ways of thinking and feeling and doing. Now, neuroplasticity says that we can actually change this. So we can change all these pathways here, we can actually make new pathways. So when we're learning, and we're learning something new, and it's particularly difficult, very difficult first time, it's almost like this is because you're building, a, your neurons are building new pathways in your brain. So when I speak to my students directly, the best way I try and describe it is, right, imagine your brain is a, a gigantic forest, let's say, right, and it's full of brambles, full of nettles, and your learning that you're doing, you've got to get from one side of this forest to the other. So the first time you go, you're by yourself, you ain't got gloves on or anything like that, you're in a pair of shorts, really short shorts, and you've got to get through these brambles, you've got to uh, get through these nettles, so along the way, you're going to get scraped, you're going to get stung probably, and the first time is going to be a hell of a trek. And then when you get to the other side, you realise you forgot the thing that you needed in the first place, you've got to go all the way back again. But over time, and I mean over a long period of time, we're talking, might take months, might take a little bit longer than that. This isn't stuff that we can do instantly. But over time, if you visualise that path and you keep going, it will eventually flatten down and become one of your new pathways. And when you build that new pathway, what happens is your old pathways slowly weaken and then disappear. So this is a fairly difficult process, but this means that actually we have got science behind us here. So we've, got, we've talked a little bit about how we feel. We've talked a little bit about the research that's gone on between mindsets. 
So this mindset here, the growth mindset, that then relates to these ideas about the fact that we can actually change up our thought patterns. Now, let's go back to this internal dialogue. Okay, so some of these things that I might have mentioned about past students, we recognise that they're in all of us. We're human beings. We all have worries and concerns about stuff. We all start this dialogue in our heads about whether we're doing the right thing. So I'm really pleased that you came here this evening because this is almost the hardest thing to do. Because one of the things that we find really difficult, and this is certainly me, that that sort of fixed mindset has a real fear of uh, being judged. Actually, that feeling of your intelligence is being judged, or that because we haven't got it yet, that we might feel that we never get it, or we're not worth it, or we're never going to achieve our goals. So the biggest thing here, and this is the hardest thing to do, is for us to actually try and remove this feeling that we're being judged constantly. And I know certainly for a student in college at the moment, education seems to grade, grade you more than ever. Whereas what we're doing and what we're planning with these workshops is actually starting to look at your learning as in how can we help you to learn the subjects that you're studying. And this is based a lot on our mindsets. So the difficult thing for us guys now is how do we remove ourselves out of our comfort zone? Because whether you are, whether you've just joined as an AS, that huge leap that you've had to do from GCSE, or whether you've moved from AS to A2, again, it's another leap. And then if you continue with an education, unfortunately, you've got another massive one, and then you'll get a job, and then you'll have another massive one. So what this is all about is the strategies that we need to put in place to um, feel secure and actually be able to succeed and achieve the things that you want to. So we've got this new learning. So effort, we might think, well, I, I, I am putting the effort in. But what we're going to actually look at is how we put that effort in, the right kind of effort. Mistakes, actually being comfortable and OK with making our mistakes and the perseverance. Because at the moment, this is probably a really difficult time for you. You've pro you, you, know, you guys do four subjects. Some of you do a BTEC along with an AS level as well. So this is a, a, a huge amount of work, and we completely empathise with the amount that you've got to cover. Now, you've got all those different teachers. Sometimes you might have two teachers per subject. So you've got eight teachers, maybe, all saying different things to you about your learning, all saying, well, we're not quite there yet. So how do we persevere, and how do we create this engagement for much longer periods of time, breaking it down into chunks, slowly ticking everything off? So we're looking at more strategies. Because what we want you to be able to achieve, and, and this is all of us really, is that you are in control of your learning. And this is what we want. This is your learning curve. This could be your learning curve into whatever this is going to be. So we're going to look at five things. OK, we've got vision. Now, Vision is about, we recognise that some people actually don't know what they want to do next. And that this can be quite difficult and quite demotivating when you come against uh, perhaps like the results that you've got at the moment. So the vision workshops are about helping you decide or put those things into perspective. So whether it's just a vision towards completing the AS year, what type of grades that you would like, or maybe it's a bit further, it's the end of college life altogether. Or it's even further than that, is what type of lifestyle do you want? What type of job do you want when you leave? We've noticed that all of these things make an impact on our study. Now, effort is a tricky one because it's quite subjective. So I suppose the best way for me to describe it so that we all can relate to how, how we judge effort is that OK, so at the moment, right, I really like cake, OK? And I have a lot of friends that also like cake. And my friendship group realised, actually, we need to, to cut down on this cake. 
So we're all putting in the effort to try and reduce the amount of cake we eat. But when I know that Susan's had a slab that's more than me, I'm thinking, actually, I'm doing all right. My effort is paying off. I've eaten less cake than her, so I'm doing okay. So you guys can think of that in terms of your friendship groups, perhaps, because we associate ourselves, we're human beings, we associate ourselves with like-minded people. So we can be quite subjective to think that, okay, well, in my friendship group, I'm doing okay. My revision strategies that I've got going on, uh, I think are being more successful than my mates, so perhaps I'm doing all right. But what we actually need to do is we need to look at effort in general and actually look at it a across every learner and then gauge whether actually we're putting in the right type of strategies. Then we've got systems. So systems fall into two categories. Systems are about organisation. We've got organisation of time and then we've also got organisation in terms of this overload of information that you guys are taking in on a daily basis. So if we go back to your four subjects, you have two lessons of those about, oh, is it three, I think, a week. So you've got all of this, all of these lecture notes, all of the stuff that the teachers are telling you. So how are you filing them? Where are you storing them? Are they going in order? We can start to look at whether how you're working has that had an impact on um, your performance, maybe? And if we change that up, would that have a difference? And then also, obviously, our time. Our time is very precious. So how are we organising our time to ensure that every single subject, we give that enough? Because most of you probably got a part-time job as well, and our social life is incredibly important. So how are we balancing all of those things? Practice. It's quite simple. Practice isn't about what you practice, it's about how you practice it. So there are some quite good skills that we can teach you that will help you in all your different subjects because you'll probably notice that some of you might have used the same type of practice or the same sort of revision that you did at GCSE. So obviously, of course we're going to think that that might work, but actually, we might have come unstuck there because what we have put into practice, which has worked in the past, all of a sudden isn't working. So perhaps we need to look at new systems of practice and improving that. And then lastly, attitude. Now, attitude, I always think, actually, it's got a bit of a uh, negative connotation, but in terms of what we're talking about, attitude is back to our mindsets, how we feel about ourselves and our belief in our ability. And this is where I talk back to that thing again. So how many of us here think, um, oh, God, I'm no good at maths? Or, no, 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 I'm not a creative person. Athletic? <laughs> no, definitely not. How many of us think, uh, no, I'm not a natural? Oh, yeah, John. Oh, God, he's so good at music. He's just a natural, isn't he? Probably not. Behind the scenes, John might be doing a hell of a lot of work because he's really keen on music. And that actually... If you guys want to dig into, de into mindset a little bit deeper, it's certainly helped me over the last couple of years thinking that a lot of areas in my life are quite fixed. So I fear maths. I can't bloody stand maths. Maths is not my subject whatsoever. And before I got into this, I used to hide it, and I used to avoid it wherever possible. Obviously, when I had to start doing data crunches, it, it started to highlight, <laughs> highlight that. But what I realised is that actually my problem with maths is my problem. It isn't anybody else's. I used to blame my schooling. I was a very shy student. I wasn't very keen on going, excuse me, I don't, I don't understand this. That's, that wasn't me. I thought if I kept quiet, it'd be great. I could just sail through, I could be completely ignored. And actually it turns out that's what happened. But now looking back, I realised that perhaps that wasn't the best strategy for me at that time. So it is up to us, and it is up to us, and this is where we come back to that self-doubt, our self-doubt up here, our internal dialogue. We know more a little bit about the brain now. We know that we've got to stop this feeling of being judged, and that actually with these five workshops that we've got in place, Hopefully, these will help us in terms of how we're learning. And you're going to be able to take that information and then filter that into your subject areas. So these are going to take place 
um, not next week, the week after. They're going to be timetabled in and around your subjects at the moment, so there won't be any clashes with any of your subjects or any of your booster or workshops, anything like that. Now, your teachers have highlighted to me which ones they think will help you the most. But after tonight, if you are actually interested in coming into more of them, just get in touch with your PDT and you're welcome to come into any of these. Right, this isn't extra work. These are going to be, like today, they're going to be talks. It's going to be you finding out a lot more about yourselves, actually, and what practices that you can start to put in. And I think this is the most important thing here. This is why we're, we're doing all of this, because this isn't to say, you know, you're not working hard enough. You're not, you're not, what are you doing here? You're not doing anything. We realise that that isn't the case at all. Okay. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you.